Hi, this is Privateer Station, and today we are bringing you another video about the effort of Russian mobilization, how they failed it during the first month. It's been a little over a month and a half since Vladimir Putin announced mobilization. During that time, all theoretical suppositions about potential issues were disproved, because reality turned out to be much worse. They were grabbing not just everybody, but also including people with serious medical conditions. Mobilized are not only dying on the front, where they're being sent without any prep, but they're also dying in the training camps. People lack ammo, they lack weapons, they lack uniforms, they lack shovels and medical supplies. Michael Naki is summing the results of the first month of mobilization in this new video, brought to you by the voice of Nadia Dan. Enjoy. A month has passed since Vladimir Putin announced a partial mobilization. With all our theories about how it will look like, how it will be going on, will it be a chaos and confusion? So now we have just facts. Now, a month later, we can in detail discuss the mobilization in Russia, how it's been organized, whom it concerns, when it will be over. Now, a month later, we can talk about it plainly. In short, the mobilization in Russia is a total chaos. I would even say it's a mess. They rake whoever they like, people are not being trained, there's no equipment, they live in cold premises, they are poorly fed and sent to the front line almost immediately, and there they die. Some die before reaching the front. But these are general words that for many were obvious. It's important to demonstrate it using facts. Now there are lots of facts to illustrate the so-called mobilization. Let's begin with a frame. What's wrong with this mobilization and why am I going to discuss it in this video? Do I want it to go right? Do I want to see the trained soldiers with good ammunition in the front killing Ukrainians? Of course I don't want that. I don't want this war, unleashed by Vladimir Putin and implemented by the Russian army. Every single day, all these past months, the Russian army has been trying to destroy Ukraine and the Ukrainians. This is unacceptable, it's a war crime. I hope everybody involved both in Putin's dictatorship and military crimes will end up in the dock, and I believe it will happen. But this mobilization is a story about Russians' desire to saturate the front with manpower, which is planned to use like gloves. No, not like gloves. We look after our gloves. Basically, they want to throw people on Ukrainian tanks to slow down the offensive of the armed force of Ukraine. In this perspective, anybody who takes up arms and goes to kill Ukrainians, thinking that he himself won't be killed, will get no sympathy from me. It's their choice, their monstrous choice. But for me, it's important to minimize the casualties on both sides, especially on the Ukrainian side. The more mobilized people go to the front, the more casualties will be on the defending side, which fights for its sovereignty. So it's crucial for mobilization to be ineffective, so that less people go to the recruitment offices and after that to the front. That's why I'm making this video about how it works, to help people even without moral principles see what awaits them. And what does await them is a coffin. One of the few options they have, they have high chances to become crippled for life, they must understand that. I hope this video will help people realize that they must not take a summons and go to the recruitment office. Today we'll find out if the mobilization is partial, as Putin announced it, what awaits the mobilized and what are they needed for. Putin promised that they will be used at the rear and that they won't go to the front line. And in general, they will join the so-called special operation after the training, they will have a good salary, they will be equipped with the latest technology. It's all a lie, of course, but we will analyze it in detail. Let's begin with a decree on mobilization. It's not a partial decree, because there are no indication of fitness category, gender, age or anything like that. 
there are no restrictions in the decree. Then additions to the decree appeared where it was said that the full-time education is grants for the determined, nothing else. Lack of combat experience, military speciality, service in the army, nothing like that was mentioned in the decree. That's why they started to draft everybody. People of different age groups, people with illnesses, people with different military specialities or without them, people who never served in the army or without combat experience. So from the very beginning it was not a partial mobilization, and it isn't now. All the rumors of its end, they're just rumors, because only Putin can finish the mobilization with a special separate decree. Until there is no decree, mobilization continues. Let's take a look at specific things, promises made by the authorities and what is happening in reality. Well, at first, how many people were eventually recruited? On 14th of October, Putin announced that they had recruited 222,000 people. According to the investigation by Vajni Story, I'll attach the link to it uh, to this video, 230,000 people were mobilized from 56 regions and also from Annex Crimea and Sevastopol. The problem is that the authorities report about the mobilized chaotically. Some say how many people were actually taken to the front, some declare only planned figures for the recruitment, some completely hide the data. To get a complete picture on the scale of mobilization, Vajni story took into account both the actual number of the mobilized and the planned one. They have detailed infographics. According to the military analysts conflict intelligence team, you know that team very well, the real figures of mobilized are impossible to count. In the regions, the recruitment plans are changing and adapting to harsh reality. Putin had no clue that the system won't be able to work with such number of the mobilized as CIT states, but the authorities do try to reach the number of 300,000 people. This number was announced by Shoigu and Putin, and apparently they cannot do it. This conclusion can be drawn from the raids both in the regions and in Moscow and St. Petersburg. People were grabbed at the tube, hostels, offices and at the help centers for the homeless. There are lots of stories about these chaotic raids. Now it's extremely important to spread the information about the mobilization and its danger, because there are plans for the next week to close the shortfall plan. So the next week will be the week of raids in all the regions. So be very careful next week. Send this video to your friends and relatives, like it, comment it, subscribe the channel, or retell them with your own words, or show them the article by Vajni Story. Do something to protect your loved ones. Don't let them turn into corpses. Why will it happen? Because, according to Putin, the first stage of mobilization must be finished by the 28th of October. Some regions started to report about the end of the mobilization even earlier. As Vajni stories say, after the month of the mobilization, at least 45 regions reported the end of the mobilization, but they continue to take people to war. For example, on the 3rd of October, the governor of Novosibirsk region declared the end of the mobilization. The first stage of the mobilization and on the 14th of October, six people from Metro staff were mobilized. The head of the region said that the region is fulfilling the task gradually. As they staff some units, they form new units, and they plan to finish the mobilization by the end of the October. So, as you can see, the dates are very flexible. So, for example, somebody like Sabaning, the mayor of Moscow, says that the mobilization is over. It's just his words. There are no real facts to prove it.
Demobilization can be finished only by the decree of the president. The CIT team, uh, they do the everyday reports on the mobilization, state that in the regions when previously had been announced that the mobilization was over, they continue to take people. Despite of all the announcements, we have two options here. The statements that they have completed the quota is either a lie or they had another quota for new mobilized people. The human rights um, activists say that the regions have no legal rights to finish the mobilization. For example, in Zabekal region, after the announcement of the end of the first stage of the mobilization, it was said that they got a new task to recruit 860 people. Meanwhile, the Kremlin denies the second stage of the mobilization and advised to address governors in case of any confusion. According to Medusa, the second stage of mobilization is now happening in those regions where the first stage happened without any scandals. On the average, they should have recruited three to four times less people than they have already drafted. According to this estimates, at the first stage of the mobilization in Zabaikalia, they might have mobilized around three or two thousand people. So the more there was discontent in the region, the less people were mobilized, direct dependency. So if you are not happy and you show it, the chances of the prolonged mobilization decrease. Now, one of the most important questions of this mobilization is who are being called. Vladimir Putin and Sergei Shoigu announced that only people with military experience served in the army with military speciality will be called for the needs of the army. The needs of the army, I remind you, are to kill Ukrainians. In general, even before the announcement and even after, both myself and Ruslan Lviv and many other people warned that they would call anybody they could reach, because the system doesn't comply with regulations, especially when there are no regulations. The decree has no restrictions. It turned out we were right. People who never served in the army and even with severe illnesses were drafted. For example, insulin-dependent diabetics, people with cancer and hepatitis. Summons were sent even to the blind and people diagnosed with HIV. There are lots of stories about people with health problems. Some already died in the training centers. These are not isolated cases or rare kings. We have recruitment officers. They receive plans to mobilize a certain number of people and they grab everybody, irregardless of the conditions and situation. Moreover, there were no medical assessment, no medical examinations. People were sent to the training grounds straight away. There are lots of stories when a person goes to, to the recruitment office, he was told just to register and bring the proofs of his illness or the determined from the mobilization, the so-called the armor. He was taken to the training grounds and then the war. So the recruitment office is your enemy. A summons is your enemy. You must remember that mobilization will go on until the end of the war. There will be the first wave, the second wave, the 50th wave, and it will happen despite Putin's promises that it will end on the 28th of October. By the way, the reason why he says that is because on the 1st of November a new autumn compulsory draft begins. So they might take a break on this period, November, December, and after that they will continue to mobilize. By the time the front will have grinded, digested, killed the mobilized from the first stage. We have a story with the determined, the so-called the armor. It was widely proposed that IT engineers must have the determined. From the mobilization, Mishustin and others suggested and reassured people that no need to worry, um, people will have, the IT engineers will have the armor. But it's absolute lie, it doesn't work. For example, in Novosibirsk, 
Thirty IT engineers who had the armor received summons. The recruitment officers came to the company and just handed 35 summons to the IT team. Though the company had accreditation in Min Cifri and all the IT specialists had the armor. 35 people is 5% of the company staff. Only six served in the army and nobody had combat experience. Armor, health condition, age, children, army service, nothing, nothing can protect you from the mobilization. Remember it. A military commissar is your enemy. You shouldn't set a foot in the recruitment office. People who during the first weeks willingly queued in the recruitment offices with the words, well, what can we do, let's go to the war, they faced the fact that Russia isn't ready for the mobilization. From day one, the evidence began to emerge that there was practically no equipment. They reported the problems with the uniform, weapons. The mobilized man from Murmansk region complained to the governor that their uniforms were ten times larger their size. The mobilized man from Tver region showed a tiny bulletproof vest for young girls and plastic helmets. We got similar evidence from those who already had been sent to the front. The mobilized from the North Ossetia complained that they had no machine guns, drones, night vision devices. According to CIT analysts, the biggest problem Russia had was the body armor. Uh, they didn't have enough even for the volunteers. We see the same problems. The storages of Rose Guards are being opened. They give bulletproof vests from the Interior Ministry, civilian helmets and body armor. The mobilized also lack the means of communication. Analysts talk about heterogeneity of military equipment and machines depends on the regions. In some, the mobilized are training on the modern tanks T-90M. In some regions, they do it on the old ones T-62M. According to the report, rifle units are being formed which don't have armored vehicles. It means that the mobilization warehouses are not prepared for it. They were not able to provide the army with the vehicles in short time. Ukraine had the same problems during its two mobilizations in 2014 and in 2022. Since the Ukrainian army was developing similarly and had the same problems with the Soviet heritage, Russia should have studied Ukrainian's experience. But it wasn't done. So now Russia is following the same route Ukraine went eight years ago. I want to talk specifically about the premises. Assembly halls, fields, people are put in random places since nothing was prepared. There aren't enough training grounds and those available are not designed for such flow of people. And the conditions of living are worse than those in prisons. I remind you that there are no charges for not taking a summons. They try to use the law article number 328. But the prosecutor's office cancelled the case because Article 328 can be used only with a compulsory draft. They can't charge you with anything, so just don't take a summons. But if you take a summons, don't go to the recruitment office. You'll be severely punished with a fine of 3,000 rubles. If you go to the recruitment office and you're sent somewhere, yes. There is a criminal liability, two years of imprisonment, but you will stay alive. It's a good bargain. Your task is not to take a summons. Very simple. I remind you and you remind your friends and relatives. So people are placed in horrible living conditions and they start to have problems with health. Some people spend several days in a cold train. The winter's coming, by the way. There is no winter ammunition. The situation will deteriorate. If you decide to take part in it, you will face all that. Furthermore, very often families of the mobilized are forced to buy the ammunition. There are a lot of reports about that. For example, the relatives of the mobilized in Moscow spent 100,000 rubles on ammunition. They say during the first three days at the collection point he was given nothing, then only the uniform and army boots were given.
In the beginning of October, on the website of Russian government, the authorities stated that the mobilized will not be compensated for the purchase of the ammunition. So you buy it and nobody will pay you for it, even though the army should have supplied you with everything. In some regions, the cost of ammunition fell on the regional budgets. The authorities of Marielle are going to spend 7 million rubles on ammunition, according to the report by state procurements. In other regions, the cost of ammunition had to be paid by civil servants. A resident of Belgorod region complained to the governor that at schools and nurseries teachers must give away their day's salary to pay for the ammunition, otherwise they will be fired. In Perm, teachers were asked to donate money to the army. We have tons of reports like that. As I mentioned earlier, from day one there were problems with premises. Complaints about living conditions came from various regions. The mobilized Moscovites had slept outside for several days in Belgrade region. They weren't given even tents and sleeping bags. The mobilized from Zabaikalsky Krai washed themselves using water bottles. And the mobilized from Khantimansisk region heated the tents with small stoves. The mobilized from Vladimir region slept on the floor in the training center in Nizhny Novgorod region. They were sent there because in Vladimir the training center was overcrowded. As the governor said, there are four times more people than a military unit can accommodate. Human rights activists of Krasnodarsky Krai reported some people couldn't be mobilized because of the lack of premises. CIT experts state that there were cases when the mobilized were kept at the gates of the training centers because the people in charge had no clue about their arrival and where to put them. This terrible disorganization added to the overload of the system resulted in chaos. No places, no decrees, plus combat coordination training without proper machines can result in bizarre incidents. The combat coordination in Crimea, take a look. Вот такая у нас идет боевая подготовка. Yes, men cut the grass with shovels. But these people are lucky, they at least have shovels. It's a luxury in the Second Army in the world. Many have to pay for that. Here we see the chat of wives of the mobilized. I strongly recommend to read those chats to check if we all lie here that everything goes wrong. Wives buy shovels, axes, ropes, hacksaws for their husbands who dig trenches with their hands. Volunteers and relatives buy not only clothes, bedding, sleeping bags, food and medication, but tools for survival in the forests and digging trenches. They discuss all that in their chats. But many people in those training centers don't spend much time there, they are sent to the front. I want to remind you that the authorities promised that the mobilized would be trained properly before the dispatch to the front line. A month later, it turned out that the mobilized are thrown into the front without minimal training. For example, the mobilized in Leningrad region testify that they were sent to the front after five days of training. What can you learn in five days, especially if you never served in the army? It's hard to imagine. You can learn to die, to stop Ukrainian soldiers with your bodies. The quality of training is poor. Moscovites say that during the two-week training they shoot only two, three times. Shootings lasted around two hours, but we shot only once. They told us about medicine, 10 minutes, 10 minutes about drones, and about mines also around 10 minutes. In the training center of Elan, Sverdlovsk region, four mobilized died even before the dispatch to the front. The mobilized there were taught to march. In Novosibirsk, people used the old tanks T-62M. The mobilized with combat experience 
had only a few days of free training. To send people to the front with such training is a crime in any war, especially in this war. When you are mobilized, you must have personal training first, then in a crew, then you must practice combat coordination. It didn't happen. The maximum was personal training. If in the past the training lasted at least a month, now we don't see that. CIT analysts say this is happening because the system cannot cope with the flow of people in such short period of time. The mobilized are two, three times more than the conscripts, which were prepared every half a year. The pull level of the training is caused by the lack of the instructors' time and the congestion in the training centers. The whole system is ruined because the officers that were supposed to train the mobilized are now take part in the war. And as a result, they are either killed or in captivity or still at the front, say CIT. It's essential to stress out that the fact that the mobilization goes wrong with poor training and ammunition it is a good thing, because it won't dramatically automatically affect the situation at the front. It will have some effect, and with purely quantity, the Russian army might manage to, to slow down the Ukrainian armed forces. Their offensive won't be sweeping, but it won't change the outcome of the war. But what I hope for is that, after watching my videos, people will not go to the recruitment offices. I have already examples of that, so they won't have a chance to kill Ukrainian citizens who are protecting their country. But the most important part of the mobilization is the way the mobilized die. Now we know already of tens of people, but these are only those we know about. In real life, I'm sure the numbers are higher. We have proofs of how quickly the mobilized die. The coffins are going back and they will continue to go. The news about the first dead among the mobilized shows that they were sent to the front after only a few days of the recruitment. The earliest mentioned death of the mobilized is on the 4th of October. On this day Andrei Pichuev from Buryatia died. He received summons on 22nd of September, as the local newspapers write. In some cases, the gap between the summons and the front line was less than 10 days. It was the minimum period of training promised by Putin. On the 14th of October, he said that before the dispatch to the front, the mobilized will get 5 to 10 days of primary training and then 5 to 15 days of the military training. For example, three out of five mobilized from Chelyabinsk region, the local authorities reported about their deaths. They found themselves at the front on the 3rd of October, though they have been mobilized on the 26th, 29th of September. You can count yourself, but it's less than what Putin had promised. The relatives of the dead told about it to the Russian service BBC. So Putin lies here as well. But to imagine that people will be sent to the front line after less than 10 days of training is beyond me. The mobilized from Krasnodarsky Krai made a video in Ukraine with harsh criticism of the Ministry of Defense. They said that they were thrown out in the fields like dogs, they had only Kalashnikovs and bayonet knives. They had no cartridges, no commanders, they had to look for medicine themselves, and they had no clue what they were at. Among them was Anton Kuligin, a deputy from Krasnodar, who recently supported the war and had stickers of swastika on his car with Zvastikas. This is what they say. Our dear authorities of Russian Th Federation, so-called the Ministry of Defense, we are the mobilized of Krasnodarsky Krai. For a month we have been preparing for something, nobody knows for what. They took us here and there. Now we are somewhere in Ukrainian fields. We were thrown out like dogs, literally, in the fields. No shovels. We have nothing with us. Ammunition? We have only our personal one. We just live in a field. Now and then they bring us food. We light the fires, we cut the trees, we dig with whatever we have. We were giving only Kalashnikovs and knives, and they left us like that to survive. We have no information, no commanders, we're sitting on pins and needles, and we don't know where ours and theirs are. No communication, no cartridges, we have fuck all, no medicine, at least it's warm during the day, 
At night, it's around zero. We wanted to show to our government. Is this normal? Let's get back to the killed. In the first month of the mobilization, at least 26 people were killed from different regions, from Moscow and St. Petersburg to Buryatia and Yakutia, as Vajni Istori reported based on the open news in the press. We must understand that real numbers are higher. 26 are those who they 100% managed to prove and verify. At least 30 people died before reaching the front in the collection points and military units, on various reasons from suicide to health problems. The shooting in Belgorod region was the most massive case of casualties among the mobilized not reached the front. As reported, between 11 to 32 people were shot. So, according to the official data, more people died in the training uh, centers than in the front. But this list will grow. Also, the mobilized have been taken prisoners from day one. As Radio Svoboda reports, there are already videos from Ukrainian captivity where we see the first mobilized. On the 4th of October, a video with Mikhail Kulikov from Orenburg region appeared. He said that he had received a summons on 21st of September and on 25th he was already in Ukraine. Before the medical assessment he was trying to find the way to surrender to survive. If you are at the front, this is one of the options you have to save your life. Another captive, Yegor Chibotarov from Lipetsk region, in his interview he says that he was mobilized on 22nd of September and after that his unit was taken to Svatova, as he says. He didn't want to fight in Ukraine, he was forced to go to the war under the fear of jail. After 26 days from the mobilization, he returned from the captivity to Russia. Here are some typical examples of those who died on this war. They demonstrate both stupidity and meanness of the system. An IT specialist from Raiffeisen Bank died in the war. He had an armor. The man went to the recruitment office to get his determined and he was taken to the military center. Timur Ismailov was mobilized on the 23rd of September. Despite his armor, the recruitment office refused to exclude him from the list without the court's decision. His sister said that he was given four hours for preparation. He had no time to collect all needed documents. His lawyer filed a complaint with the military prosecutor's office, but he didn't receive a prompt response. We all remember the lawyer from Ksenia Sobchak's video. On the 7th of October, Ismailov was already in the war zone, and on the 13th of October, he came under mortar attack and he was killed. His lawyer reported about it. So please do not listen to those stooges who called you to go to the recruitment office. They say, go and specify, file a complaint and so on. You must not set a foot there, otherwise your feet and your legs will stay in Ukrainian soil. Another typical story from St. Petersburg. Andrei Nikiforov, a lawyer, got a summons on the second day after the mobilization announcement. He was trained only for two weeks. Three days they trained him to fight. Then they took him to Belgorod, where he had to buy his ammunition himself, and he appeared on the occupied territory where he was killed. The family was told that he died near Lysychansk, Lugansk region, on the 7th of October. You can see the picture from the media about the dead mobilized. So far the deaths uh, of each of them get into the news, because it hasn't turned into a huge wave yet, but we are close to the moment when we see hundreds and thousands of casualties. So think about it. You will die if you go to this war. Some goes for the financial reasons, and their relatives let them go for the financial reasons, expecting good salaries. Let me explain. During the training, the mobilized started to complain about the promised payments. In the Malinine region, the wife of the mobilized got 792 rubles. In Bashkortostan, relatives got 1,800 rubles for four days. People from Kurgan region in their video said that they didn't get the promised payments and had to buy ammunition themselves, and their loans weren't frozen. 
VK deleted this video at the request of the Prosecutor General's office. Even Vladimir Putin acknowledged the problem with salaries. But those who truly believe that they will get the money, they don't know Vladimir Putin and his endless promises. His promises in 2008, the decrease of 2012. If you hope to get the salary, you are mistaken. I personally think no money is worth dying for, but if you think differently, you can try. Uh, but you have to know that you won't be paid. The regional authorities are trying to help the mobilized. For example, in Tomsk, the mobilized received 100,000 rubles, but not all regions can afford that. In Omsk, the authorities promised to bring gas to the houses of the mobilized for free. In Tuva, authorities promised to give sheep and potatoes to the families. In Sakhalin, they promised to give 5 kilograms of fish. In Buratia, to provide with logs. In Yakutia, to give vegetables. So, this is the state's help. Do you think they will supply people with potatoes? Summarizing the first month of the mobilization, everything is a lie. The form, the purposes. At first they said that Russia had been attacked and we had to defend it, but nobody knows who attacked. Promises about the rear. In real life it's the front and the coffins going back home. No payments, terrible conditions, people die in both training centers and at the front. The mobilization is the worst thing that can happen with you. Avoid it by any means. When they say it's over, no, it won't be over. The first portion will be grinded and they will continue mobilizing. The mobilization will last till the end of the war. Don't believe, don't be afraid, don't ask, don't take summons and don't go to the recruitment offices. I'm Michael Naki. You can support the channel with Patreon. I attached the link. All the best. Bye.